From the coughing to the ominous sounds of a ventilator, these are the gripping images. It just progressively got, for, got worse extremely fast. 17-year-old <coughs> Tristan Zofeld wants you to see the lowest point so far in his young life, and doctors say he got here because of vaping. I woke up just throwing up everywhere, and my heart was just pounding out of my chest going 100 miles an hour. In late July, Zofeld showed up to Cook Children's in Fort Worth in bad shape. His lungs were failing, so doctors quickly put him into a medically induced coma and on a breathing machine. Did you ever expect to see your son look like this? No, never. His father, Matt, there is no test. There's didn't understand what was happening. Tests for infections, diseases, even pneumonia came back negative, but a family member soon revealed something no one ever knew about the teen. He'd been vaping since eighth grade. Uh, that it all fit with similar cases. So filled was in a coma and on that breathing machine for 10 days at the time. And when he came to and extremely terrified of, you know, for my life, I guess he lost over 25 pounds and needed to learn to walk again after being in a hospital bed for so long. After an 18 day stay, his most difficult chapter is over and his next like I said, as soon as I woke up from that coma, I decided I knew what I wanted to do starts with sharing a simple message and what you see right now. This is really what could happen. <coughs> I just jewel basically because like, you know, there's just not nothing better than a good old just buzz right after you get a meal in you. Just like you need it. You just need something to wash your meal down with. You know what I'm saying? Health effects aren't that big of a worry, man. Like, you gotta stay alive these days in high school. I mean, the only way to do that is, you know, just giving out fiends to everyone. Hooking your bodies up with organs, you know what I'm saying? I thought vaping was fine. I did all the tricks all the time. A month ago, you'd find Maddie vaping every day, posting pictures and video on social media. I used all sorts of different products, like from all sorts of vape shops across Utah County, and I used Naked Juice, all sorts of name brand juices. Products with either no nicotine or a lower dose of nicotine. Today, these are her pictures on social media instead, in a medically induced coma in the hospital. The doctors said that it was definitely from vaping. Maddie says she became mysteriously ill in late July. My temperature was so high, my brain just completely shut off, but I thought I was in the Payson Hospital for one night and I was actually there for four days. From there, she says she ended up at Timpanogos Regional Hospital in the ICU for three days. Doctors would figure out. I had fat particles growing inside my lungs that were related to the glycerin in vape juice. So and then my lungs were full of fluid and they said that my chest x-rays was one of the worst that they've ever seen. How they explained it to her family. When you inhale the moisture that is just creating the perfect environment for bacteria to grow inside your lungs and for infection to start and that is basically what happened. It's similar to what the Utah Department of Health has been reporting. Nearly two dozen cases of teens and young adults with severe lung disease in Utah. All the cases, just like Maddie, ended with severe illness and hospitalization. My family seriously thought that I had passed away, and when I found that out, it just made me so sad. A few weeks later, you can see Maddie is doing much better, though. It's very scary because the doctors don't know the long-term effects of this, so they don't know what the healing process is even supposed to be like. Maddie still needs to use oxygen at night, but she doesn't need this. After going through that, I would never touch a vape again. All right, guys, two things. I just got out of the gym, so I'm slightly more motivated than usual. And this is Tensor's t-shirt. It's, uh, it's one of my last remaining artifacts from him. I love you, Brian. And this one's going to be short and sweet. Aside the point, trash your jewel. Yeah, I can guarantee that your immediate answer is probably going to be you no, and that's pretty reasonable don't get me wrong up until last week or the middle of last week i would have told you the same thing if you want to take a trip down memory lane with me i was one of the biggest advocates of this little piece of shit now i'm nine days clean and there's a 100 percent chance i never touch one of these again so i mean cutting right to the chase last week my friend got hospitalized for what he thought was pneumonia like he spent 10 plus days in the emergency room and the doctors literally tried everything they could to treat it, and, I mean, time and time again, it just seemed like nothing was working. So the doctor took his little doctor magnifying glass, or MRI, or whatever, and he took a real hard look at my friend's lungs. And what he saw in there 
honestly might surprise you a little bit. Because upon inspection, it, uh, it looked like my friend had a bunch of shattered glass in his lungs. So I'm gonna show you the direct comparison of what his MRI looked like and what a normal healthy person's lungs look like. So here is an image of a normal 21 year old's lungs. A healthy, upbeat human being. And here are my childhood best friend's lungs after one year on the jewel. At most, a pod every two days. If that image that I just showed you doesn't make you wanna hurl and throw your jewel away right now, maybe you need a little bit more incentive. Here is another longtime jewel advocate telling me to throw all of my shit away. Thank you, FaZe Rain. This is in my Twitch chat the other day, and shameless plug, I go live every day if you want to follow it. Link is in the description below. But here's the footage of me throwing all my shit away because, you know, Rain told me to. Roll it. Real talk though, how is it with you quitting the jewel? Well, I have this one, and I have this one, and I have this one. And I have this one. Destroy them right now. Let's go, buddy. Trash can. That. The jewel. That's just great, isn't it? Now here's three clips of us destroying jewels in innovative ways. Three, two, one. Oh! oh. Oh, it's in the- oh, it's in the grass! You know, I'm always on fire, baby. I'll need this. Money game. Bye, buddy. When Epic Games tweets and you reply with your support a creator code, and it makes you a millionaire. Goodbye. Oh, oh goodbye for it. Oh, shit. Oh! Oh, shit. Uh, and if you want to see more videos of us destroying jewels in creative ways, check out Sore Ethos' channel tomorrow. Link also in the description. Okay, I, I know that I like to joke and have fun, but cut the bullshit right here. This literally just happened to a childhood best friend of mine, and the doctor said that had he not gone into the hospital that day, that he would have gone septic and died. He was an inch away from losing his life because of a little micro f robot filled with nicotine. Haha, ha, very funny, I know. It's a piece of shit. Genuinely, all of you should throw it away. See, you sit there and you see all these stories online and, oh, that'll never happen to me. I'm invincible. This doesn't happen to people like me. It does. I thought the same thing and now my childhood best friend has to take breathing classes. Think shit can't happen to you until it does. Please, for the love of God, stop it before it's too late. And I know that half of you shouldn't even have them to begin with right now. It's too easy to hit. Like, I, whenever I'd go through the airport, I'd hit mine on the plane. I'd hit mine in the bathroom. I'd hit mine during a meeting. I'd hit mine while streaming. Dude, you can do it all the time, and that's what makes it so awful for you. And not only that, but the liquid inside of them condenses and crystallizes. It is a crystalline substance. When it reverts back to its natural state, it's going to harden and condense in your lungs. So you know what? Tweet me fun videos of you destroying your jewel or getting rid of it in creative, innovative ways. I'll retweet the best ones. Use hashtag end the jewel. My new Twitter is at Nuda was taken. Follow me there. Um, I have a Discord server now. Links in the description below. Let's get it to 10,000 people. There's a uh, fourth of that in there already. You know what? God bless. Kick the jewel. Show this video to someone who needs to see it. This is real life. This shit is happening. And watch Phase Rain videos. I'll see you guys sometime this week. A jewel is, is like probably the most convenient vape type you can use and it's also one of the most addictive. I don't know. I kind of got peer pressured into hitting it the first time and then I have an addictive personality. Feels like the world's kind of like coming in a little bit, you know, like you feel kind of like closing in and like every it's it's weird, it's like a buzz, you know, it's like a it's like a like a sig buzz. It's more of like a mental thing, but it kind of makes you feel kind of warm and fuzzy almost. The first time I hit a jewel, I loved it. Like I was obsessed with the way it made me feel, the fact that it was so small and like it just felt like something that was missing, which is terrible to say, but for one it's a stress rel reliever and it calms you down and it helps with anxiety and those are all things that high schoolers, teens have so why would they not use something that dampens that? Whenever I'm in an awkward situation I feel stressed or something like my go-to is just is just to hit a jewel. But I mean after you do it for a while 
it starts to feel nice and it's just kind of like a nice like you feel calm you feel less anxious than you were before jeweling doesn't make me feel good anymore and that's something that like i don't really admit to myself because there's this part of me that just wants to keep doing it but shortly after the initial buzz of it and the hype of jeweling kind of faded away like it's an empty habit that doesn't really give me anything but even sometimes it's not enjoyable like you get a bad hit and you feel like shit for like five minutes and it's like why would you do your, that to yourself but literally like it's this craving thing the year that i've been jeweling i've been sick pretty much the whole entire year i have heard it's pretty awful so it might have some effects on us in the future. we'll see we'll see we'll see what our kids look like right <laughs> because it's the cool thing to do that's why people are doing it and it's really sad because for people who have never touched a substance in their life who start jeweling, they're way more likely to do other things after that. Kids do what they see and if they're seeing everybody puffing smoke and it looks kind of cool and it seems to be harmless and you're at you're in a fun making environment or whatever, it's just natural to try it at least once. Everybody's doing it, your friends are doing it. You know, your mama's auntie's doing it, like, your granddad started doing it. Like, it, it's like everybody, it's, it's a fad. It's freaky to see so many kids hooked on this thing. Like, kids that you wouldn't expect to be bad kids, you know? Like, there are good, outstanding kids who are victims to this. Just because no one's talking about it and it's not being discussed and it's not something, it's like taboo to talk about, that's why there's such an epidemic. Because it's not being discussed, like, casually enough for people to know about it and be aware of it. So let's start at the beginning. What exactly is a jewel? Pax Labs, a device creator based out of San Francisco, describes it as an intensely satisfying closed system vapor experience. The jewel can be physically broken down into two pieces, the shell and the pod. The shell is made of aluminum encasing, a lithium ion battery, a circuit board, and a pressure sensor. Uh, the other piece is the replaceable pod, which comes in many flavors, made of food grade plastics and contains a stainless steel vapor path. Uh, this stainless steel vapor path combined with the battery powers the heat of the vapor, uh, delivering a smooth and consistent delivery and high quality vaping experience. At this point, jeweling seems harmless. How can a handheld flavored vaping pen actually affect you? A telltale sign should be that the directions listed under the pod's contents is a warning from Pax Lab that no tobacco or e-liquid product should ever be considered safe. Pax Labs lists the following ingredients. Glycerol, generally safe for most adults as it is a natural occurring colorless, odorless liquid chemical. It's also a non-toxic and sweet tasting which contributes to the various flavors of the pods. Propylene glycol, also an odorless, colorless synthetic liquid that helps absorb water. The FDA has classified this chemical as an additive that is generally classified as safe. Yes, that's correct. The Food and Drug Administration classifies propylene glycol as a safe substance to consume, as they do the Carolina Reaper. However, vaping a Carolina Reaper is probably not a good idea. In addition, according to the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, when this vapor enters the environment, it can be found in several of the 1,416 hazardous waste sites around the country. Moving on, benzoic acid, commonly added again to food and beverages as a preservative, it is considered to be safe for consumption. It is used in manufactured products because it inhibits, now listen to this, the growth of both bacteria and fungi. The same bacteria that will collapse your lungs if you use this on a regular basis. And lastly, Juul contains nicotine. In each pod, there is 50 milligrams of nicotine, which is the equivalent of a pack of cigarettes per pod. In the facts section of the Juul website, they highlight that nicotine is not appropriate for use by minors. Nicotine is addictive. So what is nicotine? Nicotine is a chemical found in the leaves of the tobacco plant and constitutes to anywhere between 0.6% and 3% of the dry weight of tobacco. Nicotine and tobacco are not only highly addictive, but even the smallest doses can impair your health. So here's a, let's just do a breakdown of exactly how one puff of a jewel streams nicotine into your body and what its effects are. In the brain, one puff of nicotine disrupts normal activity, causing chemical changes throughout the brain that rapidly lead to addiction. 
one of the most common effects of the jewel and why it is so attractive is because it makes you feel lightheaded and it gives you a head rush. Uh, this head rush is actually just the releasing of adrenaline and increasing the oxygen flow to your brain. When nicotine enters your body, blood and oxygen are prevented from reaching their target cells easily and efficiently, stimulating a head rush. Your body becomes increasingly stressed trying to transfer the blood and oxygen to where it needs to go. This increased stress increases the risk of heart attack and stroke drastically. Even a little bit of nicotine in the bloodstream redirects the path of blood and oxygen rapidly, increasing your risk of suffering from nicotine's negative side effects. Um, but is this 10 second head rush actually worth the short and long term consequences of nicotine entering your body? The National Institute of Health recently discovered that tobacco and nicotine are the leading causes of preventable cancer. I will say that again. The National Institute of Health recently discovered that tobacco and nicotine are the leading causes of preventable cancer. And nicotine forms metabolites, which increase cell division, causing tumor growth and cancer development. Nicotine is one of the most addictive substances in existence. It has been scientifically proven that when your body ingests nicotine once or twice after inhaling it, you become unable to say no and actually associate the importance of nicotine in your body to eating food. In fact, it's similar to heroin and cocaine in that respect. When nicotine enters the bloodstream, it stimulates the reward center in the brain and causes a mood elevation by desensitizing the neurons which inhibit the dopamine release. And nicotine also affects your eyesight by contributing to visual deterioration. The stimulant reduces your ability to see at night by impairing the production of pigments in your eyes that are specifically designed for low light vision. And nicotine accelerates the destruction of your eyesight as well as increasing the risk of future cataracts. The presence of nicotine in your body also affects your reproductive system by increasing the risk of infertility and miscarriages. And not only does nicotine affect the system before a child is conceived or born, but babies born after being exposed to nicotine, if they make it to birth, tend to have low birth weights or are born prematurely. What's important to remember is that because nicotine is so addictive, starting now through jeweling translates to a lifelong addiction. One of the most frightening aspects of the jewel is that any jeweler of this generation doesn't quite understand that you are a guinea pig in a test of what the jewel's effects are on human health. The current generation of jewelers isn't old enough for scientists to properly analyze the effects of the drug. I know that many of you believe that if you do it in moderation, it's not bad. Uh, let's say that moderation is considered to be, I don't know, one pot a week or the equivalent of one pack of cigarettes. You already know of the long-term consequences that nicotine causes. Uh, smoking a jewel in moderation undoubtedly leads to addiction because of the chemical makeup of nicotine and how it triggers the parts of your brain. Uh, for perspective, the radiation that you get from smoking one and a half cigarette packs is equivalent to 300 chest x-ray films per year. Look, my purpose for this video is not to shame students and teens with random facts or to act condescending. You can find that all over the internet and YouTube. And to be completely transparent, I have two teen boys, both of which are addicted to Juul. As of making this video, one is home on suspension, yes, over Juul. Over the past year, I have watched the systematic destruction of what Juuling can do, and let me tell you, this is not a joke. I have witnessed grades plummet from honor roll to completely failing an entire year. Two suspensions and three detentions, and the list goes on. So look over at your friend, and if they're not there with you, simply picture them laid up in a hospital on a ventilator gasping for air. Kids, this is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, and this is not a joke. Uh, you say, but the long-term effects are not yet known. Well, don't be fooled. If you don't think, all the reports of seizures, collapsed lungs, and comas from kids your age are not the beginning signs of long-term effects, then maybe you need to watch this video again. Uh, do not be fooled by those who want to control you. If you are already trapped, now's the time to break free, right this minute. Or, or maybe one day, you'll end up just like me three heart attacks, multiple lung issues, and being kept alive by seven metal heart stents and nine different daily medications, including a shot every two weeks. I will say it again, guys, this is not a joke. Nicotine beat me in my case, and I'll be a slave to the damages until my last day. So yeah, I, I signed a contract when I was 12 years old, seven milligrams a day. Now I want you to focus, really focus, and listen. 50 milligrams a day designed to hit your brain at 10 times the intensity of a Marlboro Red.
So that was um, our dad. Last year, we started jeweling. And I remember my first time was I was on the bus with a friend. But um, she graduated now because she was a senior. And she had one. And I was like, yo, what's that? And um, she told me it was a jewel. It was like a vape or whatever. So I was like, all right, cool. Um, can I try it? Because I was curious. And when I tried it, like the first time I tried it, I was just coughing. Like I, I, I didn't even get a buzz or whatever. Like it was just kind of, it hurt or something. It was like a really uncomfortable feeling on my chest. But then by the second or third time I tried it and they told me to keep it in after I kept in that feeling in my chest afterwards, like, you know, everything was going dizzy. Like, I felt like goosebumps were going like 30 miles per hour all over me and all that stuff. Um, you know what I mean? So, yeah, my first time was about a year ago and um, I was at homecoming and then... There was just a bunch of kids passing around a jewel, and I was like, oh, let me try that. And then I did it, and then, like, my entire, like, throat and lungs, like, burned, but I just guess that happened like that was normal, so I just kept doing it, and I got really buzzed, and then I was like, yo, I need that, because that was cool, like, I liked it, so I bought one from a kid at school and then did it for like a whole year thinking like it was only helping me and stuff and it wasn't bad for me but then I just like was less focused and stopped caring about stuff so yeah it's crazy though it's like you know I didn't even think it was that big of a deal when I first started hitting it like um you know what I mean like like you just go to school every day and you go to the bathroom and you hit it and it would be that big of a deal or whatever but it's like I guess after a while I kind of just wanted my own because like I was like I was thinking like dang like if I had my own I could get buzzed whenever whenever I wanted and you know it caused me it caused me problems because when I got one you know it was like I don't even know how to describe it like when I first got one and I started doing it I knew I wasn't like addicted or anything because I knew I could stop but after a while, you know what I mean? It's kind of just like, you know, like when you go without it, you kind of feel nervous. Like, yeah, you'll, be, like you'll, you'll be sitting in class and you're like, like I need, I need to hit that right now. Right, you just don't think like, yo, where's my jewel at? Like, or yeah. if you're out of pods, you're like, I need to get some pods because you just want to hit it so bad. Right, it's just like you, you don't care how annoying you have to be for someone to just, let's just that one hit just let you hit it you know you get that feeling but it's like it's really not good for you because it's like you know there's health problems there's kids going to the hospital and like we're lucky that we're not in the hospital because we could be it just causes problems that's all it does like if you get caught within a school you're done yeah. like you get what even is it what do you get if you get caught with a jewel friday school friday school you get a friday school I got caught with it because I had a lot of pods, so I got suspended for it, and then I got it all taken. Yeah, but um, I don't know, it's just my decision making went down a lot, because it's like, the, the need that I started to feel for it, it just kind of <coughs> outgrew everything, like, you know, it's like, I could be sitting at dinner with my family eating and be like, oh, I need to use the restroom. And then go up to like hit a jewel for like what? Because it only does, it only does bad things. You know what I mean? Like I was, I mean, I still made good grades, but it's like, I wasn't really focused because all I was thinking about was when I got to hit my jewel next. Yeah, for you know, sure. like, like you, like, you know what I mean? Like you get excited about going to lunch just because you know you can go in a stall in the bathroom and hit a tool and no one's going to catch you. Yeah. Yeah, and then eventually I just started doing it in class because I just stopped caring about um, getting caught because I just figured I could get away with it, so it was worth it. And then I just did whatever I could to not get it taken. And then eventually I got it taken, so...
it's never really worth it. Because right. even if I didn't get it taken, then I would have just done it longer and then would have got like more health problems or just like mental problems like focus and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's like, you know, when you see how much jewel stuff you acquire over time, like empty pods or the little colorful, um, you know, shells. Yeah. It's like, that, that stuff really piles up. Like when my mom found that and she brought it down and put it out on the table, it was like, it was everywhere, right? Like it was a big giant pile. And that's just when I realized like, like Julian's a <laughs> Don't, no, don't laugh. I'm not supposed to laugh. Yeah, for sure. Oh my God. I feel like, I know for a fact that if I would have never picked up a jewel, my life would have definitely been way happier. Like, I'd probably be hanging out with friends all the time. And all that, you know what I mean? For sure. Because it's like... You think, if you haven't picked up a jewel yet, and you try it, and you liked it, but, like, you haven't gotten into it, you'll think you can get into it for a little bit and just enjoy it and then stop while you're a teenager. It don't work. It don't work like that. It, it's like it's not worth it at the end because you want it so bad that even when you quit, it makes when you did it not worth it. Because you still want it so bad, and you know you can't have it if you quit. This is really like you don't understand the problems that come with it until you're so into it that you can't quit, and then like all you have to do is like reap what you sow. So just don't start in the first place. And don't start in the first place. You know, don't ever do it. It's not worth it. There's nothing in a jewel that you need to survive. So why try to make a lifestyle off of it? If, exactly. if you could go your whole life up until, up until that point with a jewel, then why not just continue without it? Because it don't do nothing for you. Like, it's not your friend. It's not your buddy. It's not going to give you no money. It's not going to take you nowhere in life. Like, it's pointless. It's just tobacco companies taking your money and getting exactly. you hooked on something and so killing you. Stop paying um, Jewel or whatever, whoever makes Jewel just so they can addict you and then give you health problems because it's not worth it. Right. And if you're already doing it and you're like us, oh, so you're like a teenager in high school or even an adult, it's like, it's like, what are you doing? Like, like, you're going to get yourself screwed one way or another, whether someone finds out or, you know, if they do know, if you're like your parents know or family or whatever and they don't care you're going to have your own problems to deal with when health side effects are coming along. So, just cut. I'll do that again. I'll get ready. <laughs> I didn't know that was the cut. Don't laugh. How did you not know that was the cut? Oh, I got you. So, um, I think the only thing else left to say is you got to quit. You got to quit or don't start in the first place. Right, just don't do it. It's not worth it. Don't do it. It's simple. That's all there is to it. Don't be like us. Don't be stupid.